Your kidneys basically serve as your body's filter. They are able to get rid of the waste that your body does not need. And at the same time, it does a very good job of hanging on to electrolytes and nutrients that your body does need. It secretes a variety of different hormones that contribute to anything from blood pressure control to bone health to red blood cell production. The two biggest risk factors are diabetes and hypertension. And then there's certainly definite populations that are known to be at increased risk as compared to others. African American patients, Native Americans, Pacific Islanders, Hispanic patients, patients with um, HIV and hepatitis C are also at increased risk of kidney disease, elderly patients as well as patients who have a positive family history of kidney disease. The problem with kidney disease actually is that oftentimes um, there can be no symptoms, so it can be doing damage very silently, um, which is why it's important for those patients at risk to be screened and referred early as needed. Um, if you're lucky, you may have uh, symptoms of ankle swelling or total body swelling, foamy or frothy urine, um, you may see blood in your urine. As kidney disease gets more and more advanced, patients will start to have more problems with swelling, they will have blood pressure that is more difficult to control. They will have symptoms of nausea, vomiting, loss of appetite, or they can complain of a metallic taste in their mouth. What we use to diagnose are actually very simple blood and urine tests. So we check the blood for a test called the creatinine, which is a reflection of your kidney function. And we can check very simple and fairly inexpensive urine tests for blood and protein. The most important preventive measures are actually um, control of the underlying disease. So if you have diabetes, good glycemic control. If you have high blood pressure, you know, taking your medications regularly, keeping your blood pressure well controlled, and making sure that you get checked up regularly. Unfortunately, once um, damage is done to the kidney, a lot of times it's very hard to reverse the damage that's already been done. But what we try to do is to halt the disease in its tracks. So um, people can you know, lose 70, 80, 85 percent of their kidney function and actually still continue to live off of dialysis. And then the other thing we do is actually try to control their risk factors for cardiovascular disease very aggressively. Because what these patients tend to die of most often is actually um, heart disease and complications related to heart disease. Ideally, we like to refer everybody for transplant once their function falls below 20 percent so that they can either be listed for um, a cadaveric donor, or if they have people who are willing to donate, receive a living donor. Here at Stanford, we have an excellent team that includes both strong researchers and strong committed clinicians. And our goals basically are to conduct research that will make the lives of patients with chronic kidney disease better, that will help to slow their progression to dialysis, uh, and that if they do reach end-stage renal disease, that ideally will help them to um, have better outcomes once they are transplanted. And we are doing this both at a local level as well as uh, participating in a variety of national initiatives um, that are directed towards these goals.